Hello, welcome back friends. This is a series of lectures on tattoos and the skin reactions associated with it. We've already looked at inflammatory and infective changes in tattoos. Today we look at the interesting relationship between tattoos and neoplasms. A variety of neoplasms have been anecdotally reported in tattoos. However, the consensus is that generally there is no increased incidence of tumors in tattoos. The vast majority are likely to be coincident lesions. There are quite a few types of neoplastic changes reported. Pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia, pseudolymphoma, benign lesions like dermatofibromas and hemangiomas, and finally malignancies like keratoacanthomas, SCCs and BCCs, and also melanomas have been reported. Pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia is a rare tattoo reaction which usually occurs in the red and the purple ink. It can mimic an SCC clinically and histologically. Treatment requires potent topical steroids, carbon dioxide laser or even surgery. This is pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia occurring on a Barcelona FC tattoo mainly around the red pigment. You can, you can see it's partially ulcerated. This 31-year-old Hispanic man presented with a three-month history of tender and pruritic plaques occurring at a tattoo on his right leg. It was confined to an area of purple ink and came on two months after the tattoo was acquired. Histologically, it was reported as a keratoacanthoma, but it did not fit clinically. A repeat biopsy showed features of pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia. It settled with clobetazole propionate, but recurred each time the steroid was stopped. He therefore had CO2 laser treatment till no tattoo ink was visible in the superficial dermis. No recurrence was reported even after one year of follow-up. Pseudolymphomas occurs about six months to years after tattooing. Again, the red pigment is the usual culprit, although other colors can also cause it. There is a superficial and deep nodular and diffuse infiltrate of polyclonal lymphocytes. Treatment is with topical or interlesional steroids, surgery or oral hydroxychloroquine. Laser use here has been questioned controversially by some authors as incomplete removal could result in recurrence. This is a 16-year-old African-American who presented with an 18-month history of an itchy growth in his professionally acquired tattoo. Um, they were limited to the red portion of the tattoo and it came on a few months after it was applied. We can see the exophytic, indurated and erythematous nodules and a biopsy re revealed lymphocytes mainly in the upper dermis. As mentioned before, even though some authors feel that lasers are not effective here, here is a case where Q-switched laser was helpful in getting rid of pseudolymphoma uh, pseudo in this patient. At first glance, the association between dermatofibromas and tattoos seems to be coincidental. However, in this report, these two conditions have been linked. Firstly, there was a chronology between the tattooing and the development of dermatofibromas as the skin was free of any lesion before tattooing in all cases in this series. Tattooing also is a traumatizing act and it can trigger a non-specific inflammatory reaction. Tattoo pigments may not remain inert in the dermis and macrophage activation and discrete inflammatory changes are observed years after tattooing as attempts to degrade the foreign material. This was a 20-year-old African-American and he presented with a black nodule on a forearm tattoo which he had just had a few weeks earlier. A soft dermal nodule was noted within the blacking tattoo of which was depicting the Last Supper. The initial clinical differential diagnosis include an epidermoid cyst or perhaps even an early keloid formation. Histologically, however, there was a loose collection of proliferation of blood vessels and admixed with this there was tattoo pigment mostly in the upper dermis. Even though a reactive vascular proliferation like pyogenic granuloma, uh, they are known to occur after tattoos, the clinical features and the histopathological features in this case showed 
patient showed the patient that it was not a pyogenic granuloma but more with a normal hemangioma and in fact it most resembles an arteriovenous hemangioma so it's been suggested that arteriovenous hemangios could represent a reactive process similar changes have been reported after trauma in the past it's theorized that recurrent trauma may induce the growth of vascular proliferation by mechanical irritation and therefore cause tissue hypoxia Although there have been reports of melanomas and basal cell carcinomas occurring tattoos, keratoacanthomas are, and conventional SCCs are the most common cutaneous neoplasm occurring in tattoos. The red pigment seems to be pre predominant in bringing out the cancers. It's to remind myself and also for you that I've worn a red jumper today. It seems that the mercury sulfide in the red dye is known to cause some problems with this particular side effect. So this pigment has been actually eliminated by most major manufacturers. However, it's possible that inorganic pigments, other inorganic pigments may contribute to these adverse cutaneous reactions and they may not be identified yet. There is a patient with multiple keratoacanthomas and tattoos. Personally, I feel that this could just be pseudoepithelium and hyperplasia, but I'm sure the reviewers who accepted this article must have clarified this with the authors before it was accepted for submission to this, to this journal. The pathogenesis underlying the development of malignancies in tattoos is still unclear. We've already noted a few factors, for example, trauma from tattooing and the chronic inflammatory foreign body reaction may predispose to carcinogenesis. <clears throat> Lastly, it's been postulated that tattoo pigment may alter the UV absorption in the skin and therefore could potentially impact mutagenesis. SCCs have also been related mainly to the red pigment and the red dye. The hypersensitivity to this red ink and trauma have been suggested as possible reasons for development of SCCs. Here is a biopsy proven SCC in the red pigment of the tattoo. Finally and most importantly melanomas in tattoos. The collision between melanocytic lesions and tattoos can be very problematic. There are two reasons for this. Firstly, it's difficult to detect slight, subtle, atypical clinical features due to the tattoo pigment. And secondly, interpreting the biopsy is problematic. So some responsible tattoo artists will actually tattoo around the existing nevi, but not all are educated about this. So patients with atypical nevi or history of melanoma should be counseled to ensure that they do not obtain tattoos that obscure the melanocytic lesions. Dermatologists who biopsy pigmented lesions within a tattoo should alert the dermatopathologist about the presence of the tattoo so that pigmented macrophages are not confused with melanocytes. There is a melanoma being masked by the black tattoo in the uh, the back pigment in the tattoo so you can see how difficult it is to make a diagnosis clinically in these patients so here again is the summary of the potential growths in a tattoo if you have any comments or queries please do let me know and i'll try and get back to you as soon as i can thank you